So you've stumbled across the Cooper's 12 minute run test for predicting your VO2 max. And you want to know, well, how do I actually do it? How to set it up and all that sort of stuff. Well, you've come to the right place. In today's video, I'm going to run you through, not bad, I know, the Cooper's 12 minute run test to help predict your VO2 max. And it all starts right now. Let's go, let's hit it. Welcome back to the Trix Performance Channel. My name is Rob and I enjoy reading, running, and nagging calf injuries that won't go away and prevent my marathon progress. If you get any value out of today's video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It would really mean a lot. Also, go check out some of the content from Damo and Sean across the shorts and the long-form videos as well. They've been doing plenty, so there's plenty to check out. But in this video, we're going to talk about the Cooper's 12-minute run test. So let's get stuck into it. Here we go. So I'm not really going to touch on VO2 Max as a concept in this video too much. There's plenty of content across the channel which you can have a look at to go over some of that. But essentially all you need to know is VO2 Max is the most amount of oxygen that can be taken up, transported and utilized by the body during one minute of exercise. That's the standard definition you need to know. And if you need any sort of background physiology, then there's plenty of that content lying around. But let's get stuck into the nitty gritty of the Cooper's 12 minute run test. So what is the Cooper's 12 minute run test? Well, as you can gauge by the title, it's a 12 minute run test. So what that means is you literally need to run as far as you can in 12 minutes. And look, it's pretty easy. It's obviously easier said than done. I can tell you that from experience, but that's all you really need to do from the from the basis of the test itself and the procedures. It's not like a yo-yo or a beat, a beat test where you're being guided by some sort of audio track. It's purely self-paced, but Having said that, you need to be highly motivated to do the test and to, and to complete it at a high level. So the distance you obtain at the end of your 12 minute run is then used and implemented into a special formula, which again is pretty easy to calculate. And the answer from that formula then provides you with a prediction of your VO2 max. Now it's pretty important at this point that I highlight that the Cooper's 12 minute run test is just a prediction of your VO2 max. Now like anything with prediction, well, with predictions, there's inherent levels of error, which you should know about. So it's obviously not going to be 100%, but if you're not an elite athlete or you're doing it just to get an indication of where your fitness is at, then I think it's more than an acceptable means. Obviously, however, if you're a serious athlete, I would recommend that you go about testing your VO2 max in a lab because obviously it's more accurate and specific to you. And you also get a bit more information on your training zone. So whether that be your lactate threshold or aerobic training zones or whatever it might be. So you get a bit more specific information on there, which will be of more benefit, I feel like, in long term. So you can track your progress over a longer, longer term. But if you're a bit of a weekend warrior like myself or you, know, you, you take it seriously but not that seriously, then the Cooper's Run Test is pretty good as well. So the equipment you need to run the Cooper's 12-minute run test, again, like I said from the top, it's pretty straightforward. What I would suggest is you find an athletics track and run in lane one. That'd be that'd be the first port of call or anything with known distance markers. It could be a trail run, a circuit, whatever it is. However, you've got a GPS watch and your smartwatch and you can use that and there should be no problems there. You need some sort of timing instrument as well. So whether that's a phone or your watch to time the 12 minutes, that's obviously pretty important in 12 minute run test. And then you also need to have an attitude to have a red hot go. Now, that probably goes without saying, like this is a maximal test, so you need to go as hard as you can. But I feel like in a self-paced test without you know, the beeps or whatever you might find in the yo-yo or a beep test, there isn't that extra impulse you need or stimulus to, to push yourself. But when you're doing the 12 minute run test, I reckon you, you need to have the idea within your head that this is a maximal test that requires maximal effort. I know it sounds easy to listen to now, but believe me, if you go in with the mindset you're gonna have a go, then you're probably better off for it. Equipment you also need, so something you might need to think about is somewhere you can store your results as well. So whether that's writing it down, storing it in your phone, in the notes section or whatever. So it's important you note them down. And also maybe think about storing them in an Excel spreadsheet or some sort of database later on so you can track your progress along with the test and you can you know, sort of track how you're going after a few weeks of training. And then lastly, what you need for the Cooper's 12 minute run test to actually predict your VO2 max is the equations to predict your VO2 max. So that would be helpful and we'll go through to them right now. So once you know your distance, or so after you finish your 12 minute run and you know your distance that you've completed, you can then calculate your VO2 max using the following equations. Now I'm going to have to read this out because it can get a bit technical, so bear with me. 
depending on whether you work in kilometers or miles, I have you catered for either way. So I'm obviously in Australia, so we work with the metric system for kilometers. So I'll start with that one first. So to determine your VO2 max after you've finished the Cooper's 12 minute run test. So VO2 max will equal 22.35 times by your total distance in kilometers, take away 11.29. So obviously there's brackets there. I'm not gonna go through uh, orders of operation for mathematics. I'll give you an example in a second. And then for the imperial system as well. So it's a little bit different. So your VO2 max will equal 35.96 times by your total distance within miles and then take away 11.29 as well. So obviously choose which one you choose which one you want to go for there. So if we use a practical example, I'll use myself as a bit of a test dummy for the kilometers equation. So for instance, I completed three kilometers at the end of the 12 minutes. So I plug that in. So it'd be 22.35 times by three kilometers. And then that, uh, the, the sum of, or sorry, the product of that equation will then be taken away 11.29. So I think 22.35 so times by the three kilometers is about 67. And then when we take off the 11.29, so it's about 56.55 so for the VO2 max. So obviously we're using the equation. So you're probably thinking, well, how accurate is the Cooper test then for predicting your VO2 max? Well, from the original research from Cooper, we know that there was a correlation of about 0.9 VO2 max uh, from the Cooper's test with the, the treadmill test as well. So that's pretty good, I reckon, considering the test is free and pretty easy to implement. I don't think you can go wrong there. Obviously, the level of accuracy required will be increased or heightened with your level of athleticism, I guess. So if you're a professional, semi-professional, you're probably using a lab-based test anyway. But again, if you're you know, semi-professional under a weekend warrior, then I feel like it's a pretty good test and accurate given that it's free. So to finish off, so I can get rid of some of these notes, I'll go through some of the norms as well. So what's good, what isn't uh, as good for males and females for the for the Cooper's test. So similar to, to what I did for the VO2 max test as well. So firstly, we'll go, we'll start with the males. And so from males from 20 to 29, anything excellence above or anything excellence above about 2,800 meters. So just shy of three Ks. And then sort of, as we've seen with VO2 max scores, as we get older, that will decline a little bit. So excellent then goes down to about greater than 2.7 kilometers for males from 30 to 39 years of age. And then again, we drop off an extra 200 meters for males 40 to 49. And then again, males plus 50, anything greater than two, almost two and a half Ks will get you excellent there. So again, you can sort of see where you're at with them. You can probably trace them back or calculate them against some of the VO2 max results I posted in an earlier video, which you can check out. So you can sort of see that it's sort of around the mark to some of those uh, some of those averages or some of those norms I provided for the females again. So it's not too or it's not too far away between the uh, the females and males within these charts. Twenty to twenty nine, anything greater than two point seven kilometers, and again we'll see a, a drop off there with age. So excellent for females, thirty to thirty nine, anything greater than two and a half k's, and we get a bit further down there as well. So if you've already done the Cooper's test and you want to see the norms there, then. Uh, take some take a screenshot of these uh, of this data table and and see where you're at and then maybe compare uh, to your VO2 max from my previous video as well and, and let us know where you're at in the comments that'd be awesome. So lastly, tips to smash the Cooper's test. Well, I think the f an important one is don't run yourself into the ground too early. Like I said earlier, it's a maximal test, which it is, but you also need to have something in the back end to get towards the 12 minutes as well. You can't get hell for leather for the first four and then expect to hold on. I just don't think it'll work like that. So have something up the up in the locker or up the sleeve for that last probably three to four minutes as well so you can really punch it out. Maybe try and experiment before you do the test as well. Maybe do some intervals or, or whatnot to really build up a, a high cruising speed if, if you can. What you also need to know is this isn't like a yo-yo or a beep test as well. So there's no real uh, built-in warm-up at the start. So we know with a beep or a yo-yo, you've got those first levels where you can either walk or it's a real slow sort of jog. There isn't that with a 12-minute test. You need to be on from the start. So you need to have that mindset that, yeah, I'm going to give a maximal effort here and I'm ready to go, which is really important. And believe me, and I'll tell you this from experience, you need to have that mindset going in. And lastly, you need to warm up. So like any sort of athletic endeavor, you need to have a proper warm-up. There's an old saying, if you don't have time to warm up, then you don't have time to do the test. And I believe that is the case. So make sure you invest some time in a decent warm-up. Who knows, with a warm-up, you might just tip you over the edge and you might become excellent after all. 
But that's all I've got for you today for the Cooper's 12 minute run test. So if you're doing the test soon or you have done, let us know what your score was in the results below. We'll be really keen to see how some members of the community are going out there for the trikes community. So please let us know. If you like any other content across the channel, then please consider giving us a like and subscribe and all the good stuff will really mean a lot. Otherwise, that's basically all I've got for you. So I'll see you next time and goodbye and good running. Falling through all the good times, I find myself longing for change. Here we go. Uh, so the coo. Uh,